at least a couple of times a month, my mother will call and say, you have to watch Chronicle tonight because they're doing something on Maine and she's from Maine. So she loves all of the things that you do about that. Congratulations, happy birthday, and I hope you're around for another 40 years. We all do. 40 years, thousands of stories. There is so much to celebrate about Chronicle. There really is. The one and only Ted Reinstein joins us this morning. Hey, Ted, thanks for waking up early with us. Good morning, Antoinette, Doug. Good to see you guys. Great to see you, too. So 40 years for Chronicle. How are what are your reflections this morning as you look back on your time with the show? You know, Antoinette, it's just um, it's 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 a very, very unique show that I often think people even our area often don't fully grasp, for instance, just how amazing it is for a television show to be on for 40 years. I always tell people you have to look at it in TV terms like dog years, right, for a television show. Uh, to be on that long is uh, is an amazing thing. It is, of course, now the longest locally produced, longest running locally produced nightly news magazine in in American history. And we're incredibly proud. We are still out there, as you know, every day uh, continuing uh, to tell the stories of New England, which is what the show has done from the very beginning. Ted, everybody wants to know, how can you stay so young looking? Because tell the people how long you have been on this show and tell us about some of your favorite stories. Uh -huh. Yes, bless your heart, Doug. You're a very young looking fellow yourself. <laughs> how long have you been on the show? And what's your favorite of all the years? My favorite story? You know, it's funny. I love to tell people that when uh, if I if they ask if I have a favorite story, and I always love to say not only do I have a favorite story, but I can sum it up with a four letter word. It's OK. Um, Fred, F-R-E-D, Fred Tuttle, Vermont's beloved folk hero, the late Fred Tuttle, former dairy farmer who became America's most unlikely movie star. His next door neighbor was a guy named John O'Brien, a gifted young filmmaker. And John thought that Fred, this quintessential American dairy farmer would make the perfect subject for a film. And in 1994, they created Man with a Plan, which was Fred playing himself as a beaten down old dairy farmer who was trying to eke out a living and runs for Congress and wins. And it became this incredible phenomenon. Fred was on every single talk show in America at the time. It was a great feel good story. I must have done two or three stories over the years about Fred, with Fred. And it was just uh, hands down, hands down, my favorite story of all time. Oh, that is just fantastic. What year was that, Ted? Because you look exactly the same as I'm you do in that you. video. <laughs> some good salad in that one, Ted. <laughs> You know, if you guys keep this up, I'm going to ask to be on every single morning. Hey, uh, we'd love to have you. This is how I want to start my day. Coffee and hearing this from Doug and Antoinette. Um, that was 1993 or four, I forget, was the when the movie was produced. But, you know, an amazing sequel to that was that in 1996, about four or five years after the movie came out, they actually ran Fred for real. The movie was a fantasy of a guy running for Congress. He ran for the Senate in Vermont and he won the Republican nomination for the wow. U.S. Wow. Senate. It was it was an amazing saga. Amazing. Uh, you have some great stories, Ted. Go enjoy that coffee in the rest of your morning. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. I wonder if there's Thanks. Moxie have a great in day, that guys. cup because Moxie was what Fred loved, too. All right. Thanks, Ted. All right, tonight at 8, we are inviting you to a jam-packed primetime special hosted by Anthony Everett and Shayna Seymour. Looking back at 40 amazing years of great storytelling. We'll be right back. That was great, Ted. That was awesome. awesome.
626 here on your Friday morning. We take you down to the Bourne Rotary, which will be blanketed in snow tomorrow with reduced visibility as well. But want to talk to you a little bit more about the tides of concern. We've got two high tides tomorrow that we're watching running astronomically high. Minor coastal flooding may be happening for the morning high tide, but it's that evening high tide that we could have some moderate coastal flooding. Look at the difference in the winds. They are ramping up in the morning, but they're coming in from the north as we get toward that evening high tide with a lot of wave action. So that's when we could see the surge up on top of the tide and we may have the bigger concerns with coastal flooding. The wind, the snow all ramping up overnight through the day on Saturday. And then the storm is out of here on Sunday and your five plus five day forecast does show those milder temperatures in the 50s for a couple of days next week. We're certainly going to melt some of this snow. Doug? I don't feel like Florida. All right, Cindy, thank you. We want to turn to the pandemic now. Boston's vaccine mandate for city workers. It's actually on hold this morning. The state, uh, a state judge is putting a stay on the plan while the courts give a closer look. Three public safety unions are trying to stop Mayor Michelle Wu and her mandate from going into effect. The judge is asking the city to respond to the union's lawsuit by next Thursday. COVID-19 cases are down again in Massachusetts. 8,600 were reported yesterday. That's down 40% from last Thursday. The number of patients in the state's hospitals with COVID is also dropping. The rate of positive tests, by the way, is down to about 9.5%. At one point, it was well above 20. So certainly moving in the right direction. Some good news there. Power outage concerns ahead of the big storm. How the state and utility companies are preparing our team coverage continues right after the break. Stick around. morning you're watching WCVB New Center 5 eye opener breaking news new warnings overnight as we get you ready for the major storm on the way the latest snowfall forecast and the impacts across the state utility crews on standby prepared for what's to come this weekend their advice ahead of the storm flames roar through a Dorchester business two firefighters injured what the owners saying about the fire here we go, 6.30, Friday morning. It is the calm before the big monster storm. We're getting you ready for the snow, set to have a major impact 
on Massachusetts in several different ways. Good morning to you and thank you for waking up with us. I'm Antoinette Antonio. I'm Doug Meehan. City of Fitzgibbon, Monster Storm is not hyperbole here. This is, uh, we don't throw this around lightly. No, we don't. And we think this is going to be a top 10 for snowfall, but this storm mm. is not just about snow. It is about snow and wind, and that combination will likely create blizzard conditions. And for the first time in four years, we have a blizzard warning here up and down our coastline, including Boston, and it is a winter storm warning elsewhere. And this all gets started tonight. And you can see it's not just us uh, all the way down to the mid Atlantic. This storm is going to have an impact, but that greatest impact here, which go may go to extreme along the coastline, uh, is going to be a combination of that snow, which may exceed two feet and also powerful winds, which could exceed 70 miles per hour. So we are certainly concerned with power outages, but also that coastal flood threat come up on Saturday. So here's what we're thinking for snow, a widespread one to two feet of snow with the potential of more than two feet here in easternmost Massachusetts, where localized bands may produce closer to 30 inches in some areas. So this is going to be a tremendous amount of snow, but it doesn't get started until this evening. So it is dry today, 20s now, 30s this afternoon, and there might be an isolated snow shower or flurry. But look what happens by about 8 o'clock this evening. Here comes the first little area of light snow coming up from the south, and then that fills in here by midnight. And by 5 o'clock tomorrow morning, we are ramping up the snow intensity quickly. Heavy snow with these darker blues and increasing winds, and it is that wind that is going to cause some big issues on the road. So the heaviest snow 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. tomorrow with those intense snowfall rates. We could reach up to two to four inches per hour at times, and those strong winds may create whiteout conditions, which means travel tomorrow will be nearly impossible at times. So many aspects of this storm. Let's break down the winds, talk about how strong they will be in for that. We send things on over to AJ. Coastal locations are really going to feel the brunt of this in terms of winds where they could gust for a long period of time to 60 to 80 miles per hour up and down our coast line from say coastal New Hampshire right down through Cape Ann, the Boston area, much of the South Shore, the Cape and the islands and the peak of those winds looks like it's going to happen sometime from the mid to late morning time frame right through the evening. They'll be coming down from the north and very heavy for a while as well, uh, really all day long. So power outage potential, certainly. We showed you this map a second ago. I want to take you in a little tighter, get some of those in-between areas. Uh, Peabody, Gloucester, uh, up through Newburyport, back through Concord, Metro West, Framingham is where we're expecting 24 or more inches of snow. The amounts, I say taper, right? We're still talking at least a foot out through Worcester and points to the west of there, including out through the Brookfields. 24 plus inches of snow south of Boston, including Fall River, New Bedford, and toward the Cape where the snow will be a little bit weightier, difficult to move around, upwards of maybe a foot to a foot and a half, maybe two feet of snow, the closer to the canal you get. Enough snow to definitely cancel school on Saturday. We won't have school on Saturday. Oh. Kevin, let's take a look at the roadways, find out what's going on. Kevin. I know all the kids are asking, oh, are we going to stay home? Yeah, you're going to stay home. Don't worry. All right. We're looking at the roads. Not too bad of a ride. It is Friday morning. Northbound Expressway, probably our toughest ride. 20 minutes, Braintree up to Boston. Downtown, get a little busy over the Tobin Bridge right now. 93 southbound, starting to pick up some volume as well here to Somerville, heading towards the lower deck. Today's the day you want to go out and get those supplies, food, and water, whatever else you need. Batteries, of course. We may lose power. Don't forget your pets out there. Uh, parking bans will be uh, in effect later on this evening. Watch out for that. And if you're going to the store, you may want to pick up some pain relievers. Sounds like we're going to be doing some shoveling. Doug Antoinette. Oh, that is the good idea. All right, Kevin, thank you. Well, all across the region, utility crews are on standby getting ready for what is to come. Yeah, power outages. They are a big concern with the storm. The eye openers, Matt Reed, live for us in Chelsea to continue our team coverage. Matt. Well, Doug and Antoinette, emergency officials are urging everyone to make their final preparations, including that all important grocery store run well before the storm arrives this evening. Now, the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency says getting essentials like food, water and batteries should be done now. NEMA says this storm has the potential for power outages and people should be prepared to be without electricity for some time. If you lose power, uh, you want to have flashlights and extra batteries on hand and to think about what you would do if you lost power for a couple of days, because that could happen uh, in a situation like this. Right now, we are seeing the potential for some really strong winds um, on Cape Cod, particularly the Outer Cape, as well as the South Shore and even up into Metro Boston along those coastal areas. 
Now, Eversource is staging equipment across the state and bringing in crews from around the country. People who rely on electricity for medical devices should come up with a plan now in case their power goes out. And NEMA recommends all of us to charge your phones, your laptops, your tablets, whatever electronics you want to potentially use that potentially could give you